Okay, it's nine o'clock. Let's get started. Um, for those who don't, who who, got, who are going to be late, they can catch up. Uh, this video will be made available. So we'll get started first. So welcome all. Uh, welcome to this uh, scoring workshop uh, made by VA, run by New South Wales Volleyball Referees Association. My name is Laymond. For those who don't know me, I'm a level three referee. I joined the board two years ago and I've been helping with the courses ever since. So I manage courses, I run workshops like these, I do uh, level two theory workshops as well. If anyone's interested, uh, give me give me an email. Uh, my email will be available right here. Uh, this is a more interactive workshop. So if there are any questions that you guys have, feel free to type it in chat. This is different to what we usually run, which is run either through Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Uh, the reason being uh, switching, platform, uh, switching platforms is because people are experiencing problems joining the, uh, the certain platforms. So I thought, hey, why not YouTube? YouTube seems like a pretty easy, accessible platform for everybody. So let's get started. Uh, please note that this workshop will be completed under the 12 sub rule. Uh, this differs from the 6 sub rule, which is played internationally and at higher levels of national tournaments. Uh, SVL, our state league, is run at 12 sub. So each team are allowed a maximum of 12 subs per set, uh, maximum three entries per player. We'll get into that a little bit more later on about substitutions. Uh, score a pre-match responsibility. So they need to A, fill in location, date, and time of the match. Note that this is pre-filled for you in SVL. So your job as a scorer is double check that this is correct. Fill in the names of the first, second referees and the scorer. Do you know your, your, your own name? Probably you don't know your first referee's name. So, you know, say hi. How are you going? Ask for the name. Full name. Sometimes they have funky last names, so please let them spell them for you. If not pre-printed, record the starting player names and numbers. Sorry, not numbers, just names. Um, but this is this, this should be the coach's job in SVL. Seeing that it's not a big-ish tournament. Uh, in higher levels of volleyball nationally, we have these things called O2 Biz form, so it just has the player numbers and names written down already, and your job as a scorer is just to copy that onto the score sheet. As the players are warming up, check that the shirt numbers match the numbers recorded on the team roster. This is just so that to prevent any uh, legal players coming into the court and playing, we just want to make sure that players are have arrived, are uniformed, and um, are on the score sheet as well. Right, so the name, date, and location. This is a score sheet of SVL, if, for those who haven't seen it. Uh, I'll go through each section one by one. Um, we'll start from the top, name, date, and location. So do note again that this section is pre-printed -pre for you. Your job is to just double check it. It usually has these following things. Match number, date, time, venue, court, A or B. Um, for each team. So this is a little bit more clearer here. However, in SVL, the, the score sheet part doesn't look exactly like this. So you can see here that rather than having A, B options uh, written down and you circling it, you have to fill in this circle here. So the team names will be printed, team names will be printed, date will be printed, time, duty team will be printed. Check that you're the duty team doing the score sheet if you guys are doing that just so that you don't accidentally do someone else's uh, duty. Um, gender, division, pool, court, hall, country code, match number, all of those are here, and with the competition. So you have these two things here. What determines what A and B are? So from your perspective as a scorer, you just want to make sure that uh, the team on the on the left, starting on the left, so after the toss, uh, they, they would have had decided whether or not they want to, uh, which side they wanted to be on. Then you would circle the one that they're on. 
So the team in your in your in your in your reference point, the team on the left is team A, and the team on the right is team B. So uh, uh, addition to the yeah, I think I'm going to mention that later. Yes, I'll mention about the toss the, the second half of the toss result a little little later. So service receiving. So we've got the team roster here. So you can find a team roster on the bottom right hand corner, and it's very crucial that this is filled out. Um, completely, completely after the toss. So just after the toss, this should be filled out 100%. And after, right, let's keep going first. If the team list isn't completed, ensure the coach and completes this prior to the start of the warm up. The team name has three letters, sometimes three, sometimes five, sometimes just don't write the full name if possible. So you have the player number, full names. I know these are abbreviated here, but full names. Uh, just for the help of the competition uh, managers when they look at it. The player num names and numbers are then filled by the cap by the coaches or the captains in SVL. Disregard, use the first initial and last name. Full names, full names. Be sure to fill out the names of the coach, assistant coach, trainer, medic, and medic personnel or manager if applicable. So, so do note in SVL this year, because of COVID, uh, each team are only allowed two team officials. So this is the head coach, assistant coach. If you do realize there's a there's a another third or fourth name written down, have a chat with the coach. Um, if you're if you're not confident enough, have a chat with your first referee. The first referee should do something about it and have a chat. You know, hey coach, uh, you're only allowed two team officials on the court, on the bench, on the score sheet. Uh, Please choose two people that you want to put on um, as head coach and assistant coach. So, in addition to writing the A B for the top part, right underneath the name, date, location of the score sheet, you want to circle these numbers, uh, circle these uh, letters as well. In in the uh, SVL score sheet, it's slightly different to what it's shown here. So, let me go back. So instead of having A, B for you to circle, you have to physically write the A, B in the uh, in the bubbles here. Not too big of a deal. Just remember, write A, B here, write A, B there. And let's move on. Captains. If not previously circled, please circle the captain's number when the captains come up for toss. Uh... Yes. So, as a as a rule of thumb, this is filled out by the coach. If the coach is in there, the captain. So, full names of each player and their respective number. Then the coach, if there is a coach, signs the bottom part where it says coach here. If they don't have a coach, if this, they they should not be a name here. So sometimes there's a, there's there's teams which coach their own team. If they're a player and they coach their own team, um, make sure that they, they write their coach that write their coach's name there as well. Otherwise, they won't be eligible to stand up. But you know that's not at, that's not in your field of the scorer. Just make sure if there's a coach signature there, there should be a coach name there. That's all. So if the first referee have conducted the toss. They'll provide this. Uh, provide the score sheet for the. They'll provide the score sheet for the captains to sign. So these acts of signatures is a way for the teams to confirm their official team list. Just re just remember that the score sheet is an official document for this game for for a particular game, and making sure that these 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 signatures confirm all of the uh, information written on it. So they have two chances to confirm this. First being being the coach and the second being the cap team captain. After these signatures have been signed, there cannot be any changes to the team list given above. So what I mean by that, there's a assistant coach who suddenly rings up the coach and says, oh, I'll be there, but late. But, but then the coach uh, forgot, forgets to write down his or her name in the assistant coach's box. The assistant coach arrives second set and wants to ask to be put onto the score sheet, so he can he or she can sit down on the bench and help assistant coach. But because these signatures are signed, 
they have locked in what is given above. And as a result, they cannot sit down. So in this in this in this year's case, they will be asked to leave. Uh, for a senior's game, that is. And also for a junior's game. If anyone has if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, this is, this isn't the trickiest part yet, but I think this is pretty important to know and do. Um, a lot of teams often miss this, and it causes a lot of drama with with the, with the example I provided previously. So we are nearly ready to start. The coaches should give their starting lineups to the second referee. The second referee will then give the lineup sheets to the scorer to record on the score sheet. However, there is something in between. There is something in between that I'll mention when I get to the next page where I show you what lineups are. It's very important that second refs do this as well as yourselves as scorers. Moving on. Let's look at what you need to do. Or what is a score sheet? Uh, what is a lineup sheet first? So it should look something like this. Not exactly like this. You won't get French written down here. You won't have the FIVB uh, logo. Uh, but the general uh, structure of this lineup sheet is what it is shown here now. So one thing you need to check as a scorer, um, as a second referee as well, is that you have a team name written here. You have six numbers written down here, as well as a coach's signature there. If you have any part of this missing, you need, uh, as a scorer, you need to raise this up with the second ref and say, hey, second ref, the lineup sheet is not completed yet. Can you please ask the respective coach to, fill, uh, to complete it? If the... If the coach decides to drop the score uh, lineup sheet to your bench and you see that immediately, uh, if, if you see that, then you want to let them know immediately that, hey, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't sign your name, you didn't fill out your team name, you, you don't have six players starting on the court. So why, we, why do we need to do this? It's, it's again, um, whatever, whatever documents, uh, sorry, this lineup sheet is considered a document. Another formal document to, to the game. So if none of this is completely is is correctly filled, then we can run into issues. Um, so it's 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 very crucial that this is filled out correctly and with the coach's signature locks everything which is above. If they decide to come back and say, "Hey, uh, can I make an adjustment?" Maybe. If you haven't written it down, like if it's like straight after he dro he or she drops down the, the lineup sheet and realizes there's a mistake, fine, let them change it. If you've already inputted these uh, numbers onto the score sheet, then it's a no. Then it's a no. We don't want to be too restrictive, but if the coach decides to change it after they've submitted and you've written it down on the, onto the score sheet, then that's too bad. They will need to use one of their substitutions at the start of the game if they choose to put the play, put the correct player back on. So let's have a look at how we put the lineup sheet on to the score sheet. So if we take this section here and we zoom it in, we have something like that. The end of the player number onto the score sheet starting with bottom right and go anti-clockwise on the score sheet. So this is number one. And you just literally match the Roman numerals provided here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One thing you need to do before you put these numbers onto these spots is go back to your team roster. Check that these players are actually written down on the score sheet. You don't want to find a player being on a starting rotation, but not being on a score sheet. You go into a bit of drama, you want to avoid drama, so very crucial that you check these players on the team, team roster first. If they're on, great, transfer them onto the, resp uh, onto the respective box. 
Right. We, we have a Libre here. here. Also check that one. Also check that number. Uh, put the Libre box here. Uh, it's not on here. Uh, it's not on the bottom, very bottom of the of the set set boxes uh, for the SVL sheet. That is, it's right underneath the right underneath the timeout boxes for each uh, team on each set. So remember to check that all the numbers on the rotation ships that uh, on the rotation sheet are recorded in the team roster list before writing the numbers into the rotation box. Very important. All right, so. Skip a little bit of animations, but I'll explain what happened. The set boxes are the places where you find, uh, where you record the second half of the toss results. So what I mean by that, you see an S, you see an R, and let's go back to the SVL score sheet. You see an S and an R for each for each side for each team. Okay, right. So what does S and R mean? S, serve. R, receive. Whichever team is doing that particular action, so let's say if team A is serving, you would cross out. You would cross out team A with S here, and you cross out team B with R. Depending on, on your games, if it's not timed, and it's best of five, you can fill out set one to three because you know that's going. They're going to play one to three, hundred percent. I wouldn't do it with these games right now in SVL, seeing that they're timed. Yes, it's pretty reasonable that they're going to reach the three sets, but in the situation that it doesn't, you've got you've got something to to go back on. So remember. If they're doing, if they're serving, you cross out serving. You cross out the S. If they're receiving, you cross out the receive. Just note that this is set one, set two, and set three. It goes this way. And then it goes that way. So your service will always be on the left side of you. Please note that. It will be on the left side of you here. And note that the teams rotate. So first set, A is on this side, B is on this side. And then second set, B is on the left of you, and then A is on the, on the right of you. To keep those in mind, um, telling you some hacks, so if, so why, why I tell you hacks are because when you're scoring, you sometimes don't have enough time, and it's crucial, it's cr very crucial you use uh, your time wisely and efficiently whenever you can. Okay, right. Because in this situation, Japan is serving, and Australia is receiving, we put an X on these box, on this first box. Reason being, let's have a look at this score sheet. Uh, yes, so these, these boxes, oh god, these boxes over here, they, they just go along the rows of the score sheet, just to tell you what these boxes are. So, if you can read here, so the Roman numerals are the surface orders. This row is the number of players. Number of players. Uh, number of the starting players. These are the substitutes. So how you write your substitutes is here. And then we have these things called service rounds. I, I personally think service rounds are the hardest thing to understand. So I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time on it. So service, what service round means is essentially the number of points that particular player ended on after they finished serving. So after they finished serving means they've lost that particular point and they've lost their service. Not that they missed their serve. Yes, that they missed their serve, but it could be other things as well, like their team could have done a fault. The other team could have put the ball in. The so service rounds, again, uh, it is a way to track how many points that particular server has served and by doing that we record the total number of points that they finish on once they finish serving or once they lose the serve. So with that in mind, 
because Australia is serving, sorry, Australia is receiving first point, the player in position one, position one, will not be able to serve until he or she is rotated a full rotation. He won't be able to serve until he rotates the full rotation. So, in his first service, in what, in his position now, his first service box will be nothing. Will be nothing? So you mark an X. You mark an X. So you can do that for all your receiving team because the, the, the player in position one will not be serving for this first round of rotation. He, will have, he or she will have to rotate a complete circle before he or she uh, can serve. So when that does happen, you will fill out the second, their second service round box. Let's continue. Enter the actual start match time. And let's simulate something here. Uh, there's going to be a situation. Uh, there's going to be scenarios. And then we're going to fill out some boxes. Um, give some points. So, um, so you're just looking at a particular set box, uh, sets set of boxes, and we will start it. So player number eight, team ace, goes back to serve. Place a tick over the small number one in the box under player number eight. This is to confirm that they're the correct server. What we what we uh, name this particular action of ticking over the small number one is called opening the box. Tick. You can tick or you can just draw a line over it. Just draw, draw a line over it. You're going to make sure that that person is the correct server first. If they've, if they've got the ball and they're walking towards the service zone, then you do that tick. Go in the situation later when they're not. Maybe a little later. But this action is called opening the box. So team A scores three points. You cross off the points under a single stroke as points are scored. So one, two, three. So team A loses a serve. The total number of points scored by the serving team to that point in the match are entered in the box below, player number eight. So remember, these service boxes record how many how many points this particular server served for and by by this mean we can track it by writing the total number of points that they finish serving on sorry about that um so under under the first rotation uh, service round box by number 8 you would write Three, because they lost their serve when they were on three points. So, after that, so, sorry, before that, so we tick, the, tick, tick that number, which we open the box. So, if we open something, we have to close it. So how do we close it? We close it by writing this number down here. By writing the number of total points, the total number of points that they were on, um, after losing the serve. Then you would go over to the other side, you would give them a point, and then six would rotate to serve, and we open the box. And we open the box. So Team B scores four points, cross off the points using a single stroke. So four points, and then and then they lose the serve. So we've opened this box, so we have to close it. They're on five points, so we write five here. We go to the other side. We give them a point. We open the box. We've got to make sure when we open the box, we check that number 12 is going to serve first. And then we continue. So they, they have two points. They win two points. And then, because we open the box, we have the close box, so they're on six points, we write six there. And it continues like that for the remaining remainder of the set. So what if 
What if there is an incorrect server? You don't open the box? You don't do anything until they've served. Once they've served, you, you notify your second referee. You let, you let them know, hey, incorrect server, and they'll blow the whistle for rotational fault. And then you would just write whatever the score is at that moment. So it's usually, if, if in that case, it usually is just another, an additional point from your last rotation. Um, but, but it could it could differ. So just make sure you 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 don't you don't have to open you don't open the box. You just close the box. Okay. So in the event of the wrong player going to the service zone, you're able to let the player commit the fault. Then notify the second referee of the service error immediately. Okay. Great. Substitutions. Player number nine for team B approaches the substitution zone. Ready. The second referee blows their whistle. First thing to do: check the team roster. See if that player number nine is eligible to enter the court and play. Remember your team roster is on this side. If they are, raise one hand to signal that the player is eligible to enter and enter the court and play. If not, communicate this to the second referee, informing them the substitution is illegal. What would happen if the substitution is illegal? You might ask. Well, it's a delay. It's a delay. Even though um, if, they, if, if they do this on purpose or not, it's delaying the game. So there'll be appropriate sanctions given. We'll talk about sanctions at the end, near the end. But well, let's work on substitutions first. So in this example, player number nine is subbing for player number seven. You check that number nine is okay to be on the, uh, to, to be on the court. Then you would write under the left column of the of their particular uh, position, nine. Once, uh, once completed, raise both hands, arms facing out, to signal that you have completed the substitution and are ready to go. So this goes out for um, starting off a set after a timeout. You raise your two hands, indicates that you are ready. If you're not ready. Don't put up your two hands. So you might you might have a sub on you might have a sub on this side. You might have a sub on this side, but you know you had you had to close the box first and then um, give this point this side a point, open the box, and then it can get it can get very overwhelming. I've been there, so it's it's very crucial that you don't rush. If you do encounter that situation, just if the second ref referee doesn't see it, just say, "Hey, hey, hey! Wait, wait, wait! Can you give me? Can you give me a second? Get your second ref's attention. Um, the first ref shouldn't start the point until you, as a scorer, and the second referee is ready. So they'll wait until both your hands are raised up, arms facing out. The hands and arms, just because you're usually sit it at a lower point and by raising up your two arms as well, straight up, your first referee can see much clearly. Okay, substitution continued. So player nine is then to be to replaced by player number eight. So if what do we do first thing? Yes, that's correct. We check the roster. We check the team roster first. If they're good, we authorize the substitution by putting up your one hand. After checking player number 8 is on the team list, you mark an 8 below player number 9. So remember, we go down. After we filled out 6, 6 boxes downwards, we go to the next, to the second column under the, uh, under the position, and then we go down. So there's 8. A reminder, on the 12, score, 12 sub score sheet, you do not need to write the score for each substitution. You only do that for 6 sub. All right, the game continues and more subs in the same rotation, rotational positions are made. Love the animations. Right, so starting, so remember for 12 sub rule, they, they can, each player are only allowed three entries. Their first entry being counted as their starting rotation. So because number seven has entered the court once, once, twice, three times, so if player number seven was to exit the court, they are not. They, they aren't allowed to enter the court again. 
So on the on the score sheet, what you mark is circling. This reminds you that if the player subbed off the court, they may not re-enter the set. It's crucial that you let the you notify the second ref as well that this has been a third entry, so that the second ref can convey that message to the coach as well as the first referee. Knowledge is key. All right, timeouts. How many timeouts are you allowed on a uh, in any in 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 any indoor game? Question. Uh, the answer to that question is two. Let's look. At how, let's have a look at the situation here. The coach from Team A requests a uh, timeout. Team has twenty-one points. And team B has sixteen. So under that, under that team, on the set, you write un, uh, in the timeout section. You write the score of the team that caught it first, and then the team by the uh, but and then the score of the other team. So in this situation, Japan caught it. So you write Japan's score first, and then you would write Australia's score. It's very important you don't write the time of the timeout. Uh, I've, I've heard a lot of people uh, say that to me, and like, just holding my grudge, just holding my, just holding my temper. Um, so you, you don't write score. You write the uh, sorry. You don't write the time. You write the score. Score of the team that caught the timeout first. And then the team of the uh, and then the other team. All right. So the set is over. What do you do? First thing you do is you do this signal. You do this signal because you are the you are the scorer. You hold the most important document on the on the uh, in the match. Your score sheet is. The, is the only document that can say you've reached 25 points with a lead of 2 points, for example. So it's important that you you signify the first referee that the set has finished. After you do this crossing motion, the first referee will, will do this crossing motion. So this was retrieved from the FIVB rules, and you can see that not only is the first referee um, able to do this signal, the scorer is also able to do this signal. If it's not in front of your chest, just make it somewhere that's visible. But as I said before, you might be seated down and you might be blocked by some of the, you know, your referee, uh, second referee, some other um, tables. You can put this up as high as you can if you need to, just as long as the first referee can see you. All right, the set is over. What do you do? Fill in the end time as soon as you can. As soon as the set is over, so fill that on the second side of the of the score sheet. Make an hourglass shape in all the boxes which weren't used um, to block off any further changes. So a horizontal line under the very last point, and then to the end of the row. Oh, sorry, end of the column. Great. And then you would circle the last rotation score for each team to block off any further changes. So you'll circle this last point here. You'll circle this last point here. So in this situation, um, yes, this, in this situation, I'm just going to simulate what happened here. So this box would have been empty. Um, yes, the score would have been empty here. As soon as that last, this, this player number four served and, and won that last point, you would write 25 here. But in the situation that, um, I'm just going to change the score a little bit to help us win the game easy, easily. So this is a two, and that's a four. Yes. Two, four. Oh. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 9, 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So, so the score is currently 23, 
player number one is going to serve, he or she misses the serve. So, how we close off this last rotational score is, because they're on 23, we're at 23 here, and we circle. So don't worry about the circling there. So they're on 23 here. And because this player number two never got to serve on the 25th point, so we don't open the box. Because this is filled, we go to the next rotation. We write 25 here, because that's what their last score is. And you circle 25 here. Does that make sense? So because that player never got to serve, we don't open the box. And we want to write the last rotation score for each team. And because they're on 24 in this server, by default, they, will, they should rotate to position 1 on 25. But because 25 wins the game, you just write 25 here and you leave this box un unticked, unopened. Okay. Right. Moving on. Anything which wasn't used, for example, the timeout boxes, substitutions, service rounds, don't cross it off. Leave it blank as it is. The only things, the only things you do is... Uh, just to re reiterate, is the time, the hourglass, and the circling of the last rotation score. Cool. Let's move on. Recording sanctions. So note that the sanctions recording is on the bottom left corner. There are two types of sanctions. Uh, this is a, not for you to know, but more like for you to understand what when when to write down what type of sanction the, there's two type first type being delay sanction so this is purposely de delaying the game um this is recorded as a letter d capital d on the sanctions box no only one delay warning a yellow card this is the yellow so this is the yellow um can be given and any subsequent delays are delay penalty so red card like that there's another, there's another type of sanction, which is the misconduct sanction. So this can be rude, offensive, or aggressive behavior. Uh, it's recorded by their player number or team official staff abbreviation. So if they're coach, they get the letter C on the sanction box. Note again, only one misconduct warning, yellow card, can be given to uh, a particular team. Um, Per game, and any repeats of the same misconduct by the same uh, person are the misconducts of the less, le next level. So what I mean by that is, one team gets a yellow misconduct; they can't get a misconduct yellow again. So it will start from penalty. It could it could be a penalty? It could be an expulsion? It could be a disqualification? But they're not allowed to receive another misconduct or, uh, yellow again. Same goes with the delay section. All oh, right. So when a coach, play, when a player coach with other team member sanction, you must record the information in this box. In delay sanctions are also recorded here. To mark the team member at fault, use the player number or C, A, C, T, M for other team members in the boxes. In the score column, the score of the team whose sanction is being applied to goes first. This 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 scoring uh, record. Um, so we write the score. The same way as we write the timeouts. So the team, in this case, the team we got sanctioned first, and then the other team score. All right, let's look at some examples. The delay warning giving the team B. So D for delay under the W. W stands for warning. T stands for penalty. E stands for expulsion. D stands for disqualification. You want to give the, you want to write down which team that was, that this sanction was given to, so team B. You want to write what set it was and then the respective score of the team who got sanctioned versus the team who didn't get sanctioned. Alright, player number four, team A, receives a misconduct yellow. Great. Right, four under misconduct yellow is the warning. Team A, set, score. 
Coach Team B receives a misconduct yellow card. So, C, Team B, at 3, score. So note that they've been given two yellow cards, but it's fine. It's fine, because one's a delay, and one's a misconduct. And then, Team B receives a misconduct red card. Right from Team B. So, you're right. C, under penalty, because it's a red card. B, for Team B, set. But an expulsion is when you hold the two cards together, like a like a heart, a heart hand signal, and then for a D, disqualification is red and yellow card separated. Usually it doesn't get to that stage, but yellows and reds are multiple. One thing to note: a point that is scored as a result of a red card penalty is recorded by circling the point, not by ticking it off. So you would just circle here, as it is. Also, one common mistake is circling the last point here. Sorry, I just remembered that. Don't do that. If you circle a point, we will think they scored a penalty on the last point, or on the winning point. So only circle the point which is a penalty. Yeah. All right, so that's set one. I hope that was uh, not too overwhelming. Um, remember the service rounds. Remember what you need to do after a after the sets finish. Uh, the time, our glass, circle the last rotation score. Let's look at the fifth set quickly. The fifth set's on the bottom. It's got an extra box. Not 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 to worry too much about it. Uh, the deciding set works the same as set 1 and 4. To make things easier, begin looking at the left side and the middle boxes. So just ignore this right side here for now, and just treat this like any uh, any other set that you need to score. There are, however, some differences. Depending on the toss, you will have to fill in the team abbreviations. Um, fill, out, fill in A or B depending on the side that each team took. All right. So this one is a little bit tricky. Sometimes you don't get the team A starting on this left side again. So you might get team B starting on the right side. Uh, so on the left side. So you need to make sure that you write B here in Australia. Same goes the other side. Team A, Japan. I don't think we'll get to a fifth set usually um, because of time restrictions. But if that ever happens to you, you know whatever the toss outcome is, you know what to write there, based on what the positions are of the team. That's positions, and the other the other half of the coin toss results are the service and receiving. So, you know, whichever team is serving, you cross out the uh, serving, the S. Whichever team is receiving, you cross out the R for receiving. And everything's the same. Everything is the same. We call the start time as usual. For the first eight points of the set, only look at the left part of the sheet exactly as you have in the previous sets. Remember, cross off the first rotation box because position play in position number one does not get to serve until the next rotation. So they win some points. Um, sorry, we open the box first. We open the box. We open the box, and then. They win a point, but they lost it after that. So we close the box, we go to the other side, and we give them a point. We open the box, they win some points, and then we close the box, check the player is going to serve, then we open the box, they win some points, they lose some points, uh, they, they lost that point. So um, we, we close the box by, by writing the, the number of total points that that team was on at the moment that this player lost their service. We go to the other side, give them a point, we check that player number four is serving or going to serve, and then we open the box. So as you can see, this is this is a very repetitive and repetitive action of um, that you guys need to uh, take on because if you if you forgot to open the box, close the box, give the other team a point, and then open the box again, then you might mess up the, the rotation. So coaches might come up to you and ask, "Hey, who's next serving?" And then you can check immediately for. For 18, next server is 1. 
But if you didn't close this box, you didn't open this box, then how do you know that it's not number five? So that is an important point to note. Uh, let's keep going. So to win some points, to do a sub, call a timeout. They're on eight points. All right. So this is the, the side that you can start. Uh, this is the moment where you can start using the right side. So it's important that you transfer all of this information over. Reason being, after they've got to eight, they've gotten to eight points. You're looking. You're now looking on the right, on the right hand side of this, of these three boxes. So you would disregard anything here. So if you don't if you don't move a timeout here, for example, then you'll see. Oh, you know, this team has two more timeouts. Then this team can call two more timeouts. But no, they've used the timeout in the first set. So they're only allowed one. So let's transfer all the information over. All right, including rotation, uh, service rounds, and substitution, and timeouts, and scores. So what I, by saying that, when you fill out this left side here, you can fill out the right side. Just so you can be as time efficient as possible. So this continues as uh, previous sets, looking at the right side of the of the of the score sheet. At the end, remember to fill in the end time. All right, the results section. The results section is on the bottom of the score sheet here. Oh, oh. All right. Start by entering the team names. So. Along the uh, along the idea of being time efficient, when you get to after each set, you can actually start filling out each row. Set one, set two, set three, set four, five. You can start filling out that. So when it comes to your very last set, all you need to do is fill out that last row, do the totals, um, and then write the winner. All right. So you want to write the team names. Yes, remember during the three minute set intervals, fill in the appropriate information. At the end of the match, you will have to ensure this box is complete. It is advisable to complete each line at the end of each set. All right. So how you fill this out? E is for timeout. S is for subs. W is for win. Points is how many points they win and set duration is how long the set was. Because you've written down the start and end time, do a bit of maths, calculate how many minutes each set took. If, and then you just copy, you know, you, you just record, you just count how many timers they had, how many subs they had. If they won, it's a one. If they lost, it's a zero. Easy as that. Uh, yep, I talked about all of that. The very last row is for, for the totals. So you just, you just go down the column and you total, total all of these, do a bit of maths. There you go. In the situation that if you don't, Play a five setter. You play three zero, for example, or four one, or four, four not four one, three one. You'll have some rows which are missing, uh, which which won't be filled. So in that case, just leave it blank. Don't fill in. Leave it blank. Um, yes, fill in the match starting time, the match ending time, the match duration as well. So. What, what this means is your set duration will not equal your match duration. Why? Because there, there will be a three minute set interval in between each set. So how we calculate, how we make sure that these two numbers are, are, are correct is the number of sets you have minus one and then times it by three. So in this case, it's five minus one, which is four, and then times three. Times three, which is twelve, you add that onto this, which is hundred and eight. Hundred and eight is hundred and eight minutes is an hour and forty eight minutes. So you know you've 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 done something correct um, if the numbers here are, are right. The remarks section is located just above, uh, in between the sanctions and the res uh, results. So this remark section is used to record information such as the protest. Any irregularities during the match, external interferences, equipment malfunctions, 
writing a protest or any irregularities, it's important that you take note of the set, the score, the time, and what happened, and what was uh, uh, what happened, and what was the outcome of what happened. So, for example, a protest, a protest remark could be set three. Uh, score is 24-23, Team A, Coach, um, protest about this, the Chief Referee, uh, sorry, the decision of the protest was rejected, Coach receives penalty, for example. An injury could be set three. Score is 10-10, team A, player number 10, um, blood rule, time is 9.31 a.m., chief red cleaned up, game resumed at 9.45, for example, for example. Um, it's important to note down as much as as much as as many details as possible, uh, so that you know we know why uh, what happened and when when it happened. Do note one thing is that a team member does not have the right to write on the score sheet other than signatures, except for um, a protest uh, that that a coach or player wishes to do after a match. But usually that doesn't happen because for SVL specifically we have on the spot protests. So anything that happens in the game gets solved in the game. So there's no reason for any players to write down anything. Alright, so this is your results box. At the very bottom, please ignore that. That is missing. Uh, at the very bottom you want to write your winner and the uh, match score. So 3, 2 in this case. Now it's time to sign the score sheet. Captains must not sign until this box is complete. Scorers have signed the score sheet. So your signatures are below your remarks box. The approval box should be filled out prior to the start match uh, match starting. So what what this means by is the names don't don't sign it until you've finished it. After the match, you will need to get the signatures from the two captains and the first referee. Uh, first and second referees, but not the line judges. At the end of the match, after the results box have been completed, the scorer signs the score sheet first. Team captains will then check and sign the score sheet. The second ref checks and signs the score sheets, and then the first referee has that ultimate responsibility of checking the score sheet and making sure everything is correct. So, once you finish, once you complete everything, you sign the score sheet first. Team captains, second ref, and then first ref. So what I like to do as a scorer is I, I announce the results to them just to make sure uh, that they're happy with, I mean, that they might not be happy, but at least you've verbally informed them about the result. Uh, so I'd say, so the winner is uh, this team and the score is 3-2. You guys are team A and then I'll point with my finger to where team A needs to sign, team A's captain needs to sign. And then the same for Team B. If, if they, they heard me say the results, then I'll just say, you guys are Team B, please sign there for me. Teams can be completely clueless about which team they are. So it's important that you guide, because you, you're the one who's recording which which team is uh, which. So you guide them and say, this, you guys are Team A, you guys are Team B, sign here. Okay, some, some hints and tips before we move on to an actual practice. After a rally, watch the referees, not the game. But it's very, it's very interesting to watch a game of volleyball. But make sure you watch the referee. Team A may hit a spike out. You fill the score sheet with Team B, Team B winning a point and missing the referees all a touch off the block. Once you have transferred the rotation from the lineup sheet to the score sheet, mark the back of the lineup sheet to show you have finished with it and the lineup cannot be changed. After each set, Rip each lineup sheet up. Coaches must provide a new lineup sheet each set 
they can't say same or as last set. Had an issue yesterday at SEO. Um, one of the coaches didn't give a new lineup sheet, and then the the scorers actually wrote in a a wrong lineup sheet. So uh, there comes a confusion there. Um, but if the coach actually submitted a correct a, a new lineup sheet, then this would not happen. It is best practice coaches provide up their lineup sheet to the score before they cross one once uh, from one side of the court to the other in between sets. Just just for time efficiency, that's all. If you have any concern, the second referee should be the person you go to. Once you've sat down onto your score bench, usually that's that's where you sit for the next hour or two, depending on the game. If you need anything from coaches, second ref is the is the person you should go to and ask. All right, that's it. We're gonna go to a score sheet and uh, uh, score sheet practice now and get on with it. Great. All right. I still haven't worked out what's the best um, best way of doing this is. So please let me know if you guys have anything um, more like a better suggestion. Okay, so scoring practice, and this will be conducted under 12 sub rule. Please let me know if I'm going too fast. I have another 30 minutes to go run through this problem. So, um, yeah, stop me if you have any questions. Also, if you guys have an opportunity, please run through this with me as well. It's good practice to actually do a score sheet. The more practice, the better, obviously. But um, there's there's an opportunity to do it with me, so I can give you guys uh, guidance as well. Um, yeah, let's get on with it. So you have been appointed as scorer. These are the match details. Fortunately, I'm not going to waste time writing it in, but this should already be filled in already um, when you receive your score sheet. So just double check that. Double check that that's happening. Oh, that's happened. If it's not, raise it up with your first referee, competition manager. You're sitting at the score bench. You wait patiently to get to know the environment around you. You see a score sheet in front of you. Coaches, players rush to fill out the team players' names and numbers. You're now given the team player's name and official list. So this doesn't happen in SBL, usually pre-written, not pre-written, coaches write this down. Um, so in your own time, pull this out. There should be only 12 players. You write Australia, you write the players, you write the numbers there. You leave this box empty. Um, and then you fill out the coach, the assistant coach, the the technical, the um, sorry, the trainer, and the manager. So the same goes for China. So don't forget to get the coach to sign below the team list before the toss. So you'll get you get a coach to sign there, get a coach to sign there, and then the toss. Player number 17 from Australia and player number 13 from China approaches the referees. Both players have a captain style on the playing shirt. So in this situation, you would circle number 17 from Australia and then you'll circle number 13 from China. For example, for example, for this particular example. Okay. The um, reason why I'm rubbing this off is because it stays on my screen. So it doesn't actually stay on this document, fortunately, because I'll be using set one and the sanction bit for uh, the for the game. Anyways, uh, the referees ask the captains to sign the score sheet. The referee conducts the toss. Yeah. Captains check the score sheet, the team roster of the score sheet, and then signs the their name. 
periphery conducts costs. China wins and serves to, uh, chooses to serve. Australia chooses side A. So usually this is what the uh, the referee will tell you, or even 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 shorter. For example, Australia receiving from side A. So you have all the information you need regarding who's serving, what side they're on. So from this toss result, we can see that Australia. Australia is A, and China is B. So in Australia is A, so we write Australia here, and they're receiving, so you cross that R, China is serving, so you write China, abbreviated, obviously, and they are serving. So you cross out X, uh, sorry, S. You cross out the S. Just click cross like that. Great. And we know because Australia is serving, whoever is the uh, player in position one to start with, they will not be able to serve until the next rotation. So you grab your ruler and you draw an X now. Please excuse me, I'm drawing on a computer. It won't be as neat. There won't be any rulers. Moving on. These are the lineup sheets. What is the first thing you need to do? You need to go ahead and check your player's rotate, ro roster here. That each player is correctly placed. Um, correctly placed in the team roster. But, you know, you see your lineup, there's no problems. Great. We can check the players. And then once we've checked, we can put them onto the score sheet. So let's transfer them on now. So Australia, 17, 13, 5, 2, 4, and 12. Um, this also goes for the other team as well. So we have 13. We have 8. We have 15. We have 9. We have 3. We have 1. One thing I did forget is the Libros. So 11 has Libro number 11. And China has a Libro number two. Okay, great. Line up the field, players are checked. Cost results are good. Let's get on to scoring. Referee blows the whistle, authorizing the first serve at 7.13 p.m. So we write a 24 hour time, just for uh, just to be uh, a little bit more consistent and avoid confusion between is it 7 p.m. or is it 7, uh, 7 a.m. So if we write 24 hour time, we won't we won't be confused with that. So time started at 19:13. Game was delayed due to previous game ending late. So this is considered a um, a situation where we would consider writing in the not consider we will write in the remarks. So we will write here game. was delayed due to previous game ending Don't even, you don't actually even need the last bit, Just it's because of the previous game. Alright, player number 13 from Team B serves and wins the first three points before hitting the ball out. So, we give them one, oh sorry, before we go that, before we, go, before we do that, player number 13 goes to serve from Team B 
we open the box. We open the box, and they win three points. So we give them one, give them two, give them three points, and then they lost the point after that. So we close the box, give them three here, go to the other side. First thing, we give them a point first, and we check. Number 13 going to serve? Yes, number 13 is going to serve from team A. So we then we go, we open their box, and then we have a look at what they do. Player number 13 from team A serves the ball into the net. Okay, not a problem. So they're on one point, the moment that they lost their serve. So we close this box by putting one here. Come to the other side. We give them a point, so they're on four points. And we check. Is number 8 going to serve? Number 8 is going to serve. Here. So we open the box. Here. And they win 2 points. Let's assume after that 2 points, they lost that point. So they're on 6 points. We close the box. We write 6 here. Go to the other team. Give them a point. Check. Is player number 5 serving? Yes, they are serving. Open the box. Team A number 5 jump serves 7 points in a row, wins, and then misses the next serve. Right. So we give them 7 points. So we do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then loses the next serve. So they're on 9 at the moment. They're on 9. So we give them 9 points here. Perfect. Jump to the other side. Give them a point. Check. 15 serving? 15 is serving. We open the box. 15 serves 2 points. Then the coach of team A requests a timeout. The so team B, 15 serves 2 points. So we give team B 2 points. So they're on 8 and then 9. Don't close this box yet because they haven't lost a serve. The coach from team A requested a timeout, so we write in the timeout box 9, which is a score of team A, and then the score of team B is also 9, so we write 9-9. Nine, nine. Easy. Easy. Don't draw out of the box like me. I'm just drawing it with on a very, very small score sheet. Please keep that in mind. Play resumes with team B number 15 serving into the net. So we do now close the box. So there are 9 points. We write 9 here. We give them a point. The other team a point. We go and check is number, is that number 2? Number 2. Yes, that's number 2. And we open the box. Team A number 2 serves. Team A wins 6 points. So they win 6 points. So we go 1. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So they're on 16 points. And then the coach from team B requests a timeout. So we write the score of team B first. And then we write the score of team A. 16. Right. At the end of the timeout, team B's player number 5 steps into the substitution zone. Holding paddle number five. So please note, SVL, there's no paddles. Um, there's any paddles in AVL and AJVZ and international games. So, so you want to be holding the paddle of a player that you want to sub sub for, not hold the, the your your own your own paddle, your own numbered paddle. So everything stopped. The second referee makes eye contact with you as a scorer, and you confirm this is illegal. The second referee waves Team B player number five away. What should be recorded on the score sheet? So the fact that they stepped into the substitution zone indicates that the sub the the substitution was called by the second referee because it was called by the second referee. The whistled would have stopped the game, but they're not going through with the sub, uh, substitution, then it's a delay. So in your sanctions box here, you would write D, 
and you're right. Is it? It's for team B. And then the set is set one, and the score is nine sixteen. Great. Play continues with team A number two serving two more points. Uh, sorry, sorry, serving three more points before team B wins the point. Uh, before team B wins the point. So team player number two wins three more points. So one, two, three, nineteen. Close the box. Right, nineteen there. Come to the other side. Give them a point. <coughs> and we want to check if player nine is about to serve. So the set continues with team B number nine serving three points before team A attacks the ball and wins the point. Okay, sorry, we missed something. We missed the substitution. So let's go back to the substitution. So this time, team B number five carries paddle number three and team B number 17 carries paddle number 15 entering the substitution zone. The second referee allows a sub. So before they allow the sub, what do we need to do? We need to make sure that the team roster has has the names of these uh, has the names and numbers of player number five and also player number seventeen. Sorry, this isn't written here, but please note that they are on the score sheet, but we allow the sub. But it's important that you check it first. All right. Number nine serves for three points. So they serve, so we open the box. We give them three points. One, two, three for 13 before team A attacks the ball and wins the point. So we close the box first just to avoid any confusion later on. So they're on 13 points here. And give the other team a point. So they're on 20. We don't know who's serving yet. So we do this. We do the sub. They, they, team B requests for a reverse of the double sub. Oh, sorry. Before beforehand, before the sub, I didn't even record the subs. So this is this is one 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 typical thing you you might encounter as doing score sheet is you know forgetting forgetting to put on stuff. So because we've got this situation here, we can we can cheat and. Um, Write the numbers here now, but in a situation in, in in a real life situation, this might not happen. So it's very important that you focus and you um, write down all the necessary numbers. So, so five for three, seventeen for five. And now they requested for a double sub. So uh, this is assuming that three goes back on and fifteen goes back on, and the referee allows for the substitution. Great. Team A serves, uh, number four serves, okay, we, we, we check that they're about to serve, number four. The serve hits the coach, Team B, in the face on, on the sideline. Team B, player one, angry at his coach being hit, yells through the net. The first referee calls Team B's player number one and holds up a yellow card. The referee indicates that the player number one indicates to player number one team B. Alright. So let's deal with the team A number four serves the ball and misses badly first. So they're on twenty points, we close the box and we go to the other side and we give the other team a box uh, a, a point. Because this is sanction, it's a yellow. Alright, it's a misconduct yellow. Okay. So we go to here and we say and we write number one. Team B, set one, and the points currently are fourteen twenty. Right. Team B's coach sends send player number six holding paddle number fifteen and seven holding paddle number one to the substitution zone. First thing, check the team roster. Are they on? Are they on the team roster? They are. Authorize the subs. And now, let's not forget to write down the number. So they're on 6. And 7's holding on for 1. 7. Right. 
Give me number three serves. Serves. Great. We open the box. And wins four points before serving the ball out. So they win four points. One, two, three, four. Eighteen. Write that number there. Go to the other team. Give them a point. Is 12 serving next? 12 is serving next. Team, team A, number 12 serves and wins two points. So they win two points and 23, 20, uh, sorry, 22, 23. Maybe number six doesn't agree with the referee's decision from the last point. He goes to the second referee and argues. He then continues yelling at the first referee about his decision. The first referee holds up a red card and indicates player number six from team B. What does the scorer need to record? So this is a sanction. So we go to the sanctions area. A red card is a penalty. So we write player number six there. And this is team B. This is set one. And the scores currently are 18, 23. 18, 23. Because it's a penalty, we want to make sure that we circle that point that was a penalty. Because they're on 23, their subsequent point, which is their 24th point, is their penalty point that they received. Alright. Team B, coach, sends player number 15 holding paddle number 6 back to the substitution zone. So we check player 15 is good. We usually don't need to check because they're already being authorized and we would have, we would have done that check prior to this substitution. So we write 15 here, and we circle it because it's their third entry. So note that their first entry is their uh, starting rotation. They've entered another court, tw their court twice, and then the third time here. Okay, team A continues to serve, 12 continues to serve, and one more point is one. Okay, they're, they're on 20, they got the 24th point as a penalty, and now they've won that last point, 25. So the time is 7.41, so we write 19.41 here, end time. And what are the things we need to do again, guys? We need to, our glass, so put a horizontal line under the very last point, and then we want to uh, our glass or the remaining points which weren't used, and use a ruler, use a ruler, use a ruler, the ruler. Our glass and our glass. So they were on 18 points. So you want to our glass individual columns rather than these two columns all together. Okay. Great. So we've our glass, we've write down the time. What's one what's the last thing that we need to do? We need to circle the last rotational score. So they're on 18, right? Now, we've opened this box, their last point, their last score was not 25, or not 25. So we close the box, and we by writing 25 here, and we circle it. Great. That's how your set should look like. Having service rounds, maybe having subs, having some timeouts, um, hourglass, um, penalty point like this, rotation, starting time, service. Receive, receiving service it needs to be filled out like that okay now after the set's finished you've got some time on your hands you want to be filling out this section you want to be filling out this section this section so in this situation what you will write here what you would write here is you would write really is team a And China is team B. So you're right. They called one timeout. They had zero subs. They won the set. So they get one. They got 25 points. The set duration was 13 minus 41. 28. China had 18 points. And as a result, they didn't win. They had... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven subs. So you write seven. And then they also had one timer. Cool. So 
so this is how what you need to do for from the start of the game to set one to set one um and then set two is the same as set one same set three is the same as set one and four is the same as set one set five slightly different note the toss results and then after eight points they switch i don't think this is mentioned in the slides but you want to write on this right hand side the score of the team on this that, that the team on the left what they had at the point that was changed so for example going back to our previous example uh, situation in this slide so they had eight points so they need to write eight here you need to write the eight there if that team had seven points, then you write seven points there. If they had six points, then you would just write six points there. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we won't have time to finish our fifth set. So I'll leave that on to whoever is watching to finish that. Um, I would like anyone watching to provide any sort of feedback you have. But this is the first time we are running this on the YouTube uh, platform so as a reward for you providing the feedback there will be answers released at the end of the feedback form so if you do if you do want to check your answers to this scenario which is accessible in the description below it has a link to the situations as well as some of the score sheets um, if you do want answers to that please make sure you fill out uh, the survey feedback form for us so we can improve for our next workshops but this is the end of the workshop if you guys have any questions i can answer them on the chat if not you can give me an email uh email put it up again for those who didn't see again um you can email me about any courses related issues you can ask me about refereeing any sorts of uh information like that and yep that's it that's all i that's all i wanted to talk about today um i hope you guys learned a lot took something out of this workshop and we'll be able to implement it in your games when you guys do duty um thank you that is all i'll be ending the stream now um if no one has any questions but if you do you know how to contact me all right have a lovely weekend guys i hope everyone um i'll, I'll, I'll probably see everyone on, on sunday if i do Come say hi. I don't know you guys. I don't see your faces. So, yep. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Later.